How big of a breakthrough might this actually be for a Brexit deal? So think of this as stage one. So it's a mini breakthrough. So this is an agreement between the UK and the EU. But the bigger challenge from a UK perspective, of course, is that the deal needs parliamentary approval. And uh, that's likely to happen uh, in December. So that's really the key hurdle that uh, the prime minister has to get over uh, from a UK perspective. OK, so... We shouldn't be buying anything on this news. We should be watching it. We should be watching it and paying attention to it. But this is not an investment changer kind of a headline, is it? Well, only on a tactical basis. So there's two ways that uh, investors can trade this. Uh, the first is actually to be short gilt. And the second is, of course, to be long sterling. So expect a little bit of a mini bounce in both of those um, uh, over the weekend. But, of course, that bigger bounce comes uh, when we get through the parliamentary approval. And if you're thinking in terms of dollar versus sterling, there's no reason, uh, if parliamentary approval happens, that that rate can't be 140. All right, let's switch here now to stateside and talk about something else that's big, the Federal Open Market Committee, the FOMC, the Federal Reserve. Their next meeting is coming up on the 18th and 19th of December. In fact, it's a press conference meeting. The market expecting another rate hike, but do you think, Nick, that if we keep getting this kind of weak equity market and maybe some concerns about a slowdown, that the Federal Reserve will not raise rates in a couple of weeks? Oh, no. When you look at the Federal Reserve, at the moment, they're still on autopilot. So December, very much a done deal. When you look into next year, very much the same for March. And then it's much more of an open question, of course, uh, when you get uh, a focusing on things like the June meeting. That's when it becomes very, very data dependent. So if what we're seeing now is just a soft patch, well, they can then go again in June. If actually this soft patch becomes a lot more permanent, you can then start to question mark at later rate hikes from June onwards. Is it just a soft patch, Nick, or is the start of something more meaningful, an economic slowdown in the United States that may lead into recession by 2020? It's a soft patch, isn't it? And when you think of any economy, they have little ups and downs. When you take a step back, the reality is the US economy, it's in rude health. And what's likely to support the economy as we look into next year is finally consumers and workers are starting to get some more meaningful wage increases. So that's your key driver in terms of economic growth next year. The consumer's in great shape as we're likely to see today.